Hey guys, this is Tom Englehart here and I want to share with you uh, something that I learned about how to get snappy timing out of your reference, uh, especially for cartoony shots and stuff. So how to retime it um, and get quick transitions. Um, so this is the audio I'm using. This is a project I'm currently working on for Class 6 at Animation Mentor. <laughs> Hey there, Mailman Fred. Any letters for my ex-wife or the kids? No. Nope. Fantastic news! <laughs> hey there! There you go. So anyways, this isn't my actual file that I'm using, but I just wanted to really quick pull something up to show you guys. So what we'll do is we will create a free image plane, right? And then we scale it up to the size we want, move it on the screen where we want to see our reference. All right? just going to put it over here. Then you go over here, let me move the picker. Come over here to the attribute editor. See it over here? Uh, in this little folder, click the folder icon that brings up uh, where you can pick the first picture of your reference. Now, in order to get this snappy timing, what really helps is if you bring in your reference at 30 frames per second instead of 24. That gives us many more frames to work with. So if we want to slow things down, we have more frames, if we want to speed things up. Um, because when you're recording your reference, you're never perfectly in time. Sometimes you're behind, sometimes you're ahead. And this way we can get it exactly how we want it. So pick the first one. And this was recorded at uh, 30 frames per second. So I look and see what my last frame is. So I know that my image sequence is 203 frames. So I keep that in mind because I'm going to need that information in a little bit. Hit open, and then there it is, right? And then if you click use image sequence, now wait, we don't see anything. Well, that's because this is later in my scene. See, I'm starting at frame 220, but my image sequence started at image number one. So it's back on frame one, but I want it here. So it doesn't matter because we're going to change this anyway. If you see where it says image number over here where it's purple, right click, delete expression. All right now we have frame one, but it's still not, if you click around, it's still not animating. It's not moving. So that's because we have to create keyframes now. So what you can do is right click on image number right here, set key, and we set key one at the beginning. Then what we want to do is we want to find out where do we want this reference to end, which I already figured out I want it to end at uh, frame 371, right? And so we knew that there were 203 images in this image sequence, so I'm going to type in 203 at the end. And it's animating now only because I actually already had it set in my animation preferences. If you look in your preferences, I have my default tangent at, at linear, linear, linear. I don't even know how to say that. Linear. Um, but let's say if it was at stepped, nothing would move. And you what you would have to do is go into the graph editor, uh, animation editors, graph editor, and then pick... Well, look, it's not even in linear. So I'm glad I checked this out. What you do is you grab these and then make it linear. Because you want this to be a straight line because it's counting through the numbers of your image sequence. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so you don't want it to speed up and slow down on a curve. Right? Okay, so now this should be roughly timed to the audio but now I want to hit all the accents exactly where I want them and all of the transitions exactly how I want them. So the first one would be, I want him to, when he's jumping in, first I want his jump to start when he's on his way down. So I want, and you can always look over here at image number on this side over here, image number four. I want image number four to be at the very beginning. So I'm gonna change this number right here, image number or type it in so now it starts with image number four and I want his landing to happen right when he says hey there so here I'll play the audio again just so you know what we're dealing with hey there mailman Fred any letters for so hey there mailman Fred so when we get to hey there it's probably right about there 224 is where I want his weight so not just touching the ground, but I want his weight. 
all the way down. So I'm looking to see when maybe he starts to bounce back up again. Somewhere around there. So that is image number 17. I want to happen on, I think we said 224. Hey there, yep. So image number 17 at frame 224. So now we've got this hey there. So that's timed right the way I want him to land with the accent. So hey there, mailman Fred. And then the next thing will be his transition to any letters. Hey there, mailman Fred. Any letters for my. Any letters. Okay. So he starts to say any. So he starts to say any on frame 253. And this is when I want him to transition from this pose to this to this pose, right? So that transition I want to start on frame 253. Okay, so we know we want it to start on 253. So let's look at the look up here at the reference as I'm scrubbing. And I'm gonna see when he starts to transition. He starts to move. Is somewhere around image 42. I want to be on 253. So 42. So change in image number to 42. So that way I'm holding this pose, right? Until he says any, and he's gonna to start to transition. And on the word letters, letters, so maybe 261, 260, that sounds like the accent sounds, 261, we'll say 261 is where I want him in his next pose. So now we scrub again, but now we're looking at the image sequence, and I want it right when that wrist breaks, right there. So that's image number 61, I want no, image number 61 to happen on... 261. So 61. So now this transition. Any letters happens quickly through there. Right? Now bear with me as I go through a few more of these. I know it's time consuming. And then we'll play blast it and watch and see what it looks like. So any letters. Let's listen to the audio again from the beginning. Hey there, mailman Fred. Any letters for my ex-wife or the kid? Nope. Fantastic. Okay, nope is the next thing. So I want him to stay in this pose for any letters from my ex-wife or the kids. So let's find nope. Kids. So it looks like he finishes saying any my ex-wife and the kids at 300. So this is where I want him to transition from one side of the mailbox to the other. So we're going to start at 300, and we're going to transition to where he starts saying no to 305. So our transition time is only five frames from 300 to 305. So let's see where we want where he starts transitioning in the reference. Somewhere around image number 98. So image number 98 will be at 300. And he finishes transitioning to say no at 116. So 116. Be on frame 305. So it's a real quick move. And he starts to say no. And actually. You hear him say no. Let's. I'm changing my mind. I want that to be where you start to hear no, where the mailbox door. What he's doing here is opening a mailbox door. If you don't know that, so we have a mailbox here. He's reaching over to the other side of the mailbox, opening it up. It looks like it starts on 119. So I'm going to put 119 here. So this transition gets him no. And then when he's done saying no, so somewhere around 310 is when he's going to start heading back. Which is about right. So 
So we'll say. Search the head back. We'll say 129. So we'll make this 129. And then this transition to fantastic news. So that's the next thing he says. Fantastic news! I want the accent of tastic. Fantastic for him to go to this pose. So we got fan ta. We'll say 322 is where we want him to finally make it to that pose. So let's look up here. So when his weight comes down, is 148. So 322 will get 148. So now this transition, fantastic news, ends right there. And then the next thing is where he laughs. <laughs> ha 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 is when I want him facing the camera in this pose. But there's a transition that we need to get. Uh, I want him to hold this pose, because if you listen, he's already transitioning early. Because, well, you know, when I'm acting it out, I'm anticipating what I'm doing next. But I don't want him to do that. I want him to stay in this pose a little bit longer and then do a quick transition to the left. So he finishes saying news. I hear the S on 341 is when I want him to start transitioning. Right. We'll say that it's 165. So I want 160 image number 165 at frame 341. So he starts this big hop into the ha. And then I'm looking for when his weight is down. There we go. Somewhere around image 179, I want to happen at 349. So 179, 349. So we have this pop. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so we did all that. Let's go ahead and play blast this and see how it looks. So the main thing that you're doing while you're doing this retiming is finding accents and transitions. It's the main thing you're doing. And that way you, you're already making decisions about animation while you're animating your reference. You haven't even touched the rig yet in Maya. And so now when you go to make your poses, you can kind of follow the reference a lot better and you're not having to scrub around looking at the reference. It's exactly how you want it. You already made the decisions in retiming the reference. Um, so it'll just make your workflow go a lot faster because you've already made these decisions. All right, let's watch and see how this retiming looks. Hey there, mailman Fred. Any letters for my ex-wife or the kid? No fantastic news. <laughs> And you'll notice uh, now my lip sync is off, but the point of this reference was not for lip sync, it's for posing, right? I can always do another reference later for lip sync. So right now, you try to ignore, you know, the lip sync on my face and the reference, and we're just animating the poses. Hey there, mailman Fred. Any letters for my ex-wife or the kid? No fantastic news! <laughs> and there you go. I hope this helps you. Um, so just remember, import your image sequence at 30 frames per second, retime it, um, because it makes you make decisions. Because when you import it at 30 frames per second, um, it's not going to be in time. And so you have to readjust the timing. Uh, and so that's why I like doing that. All right, we'll see you guys next time.